Okay, let's get started. Uh, we are in lecture 22. Uh, just make sure that everybody's clear on the logistics. So Friday and Monday, we are not going to meet in person. We're going to have pre-recorded lectures. I've recorded one of them. I haven't recorded the other one yet. I'll post those as uh, the, the YouTube premiere like I did last time. Uh, I'm assigning homework 4.3 today, but it is not due until Monday. So you do not have a homework due on Friday, okay? Say it again, you do not have a homework due on Friday, okay? You do have one due on Monday. The homework that I'm assigning today is a bit, uh, it's a longer problem. So as a result, that's why I'm giving you two days on it. So just because you don't have a homework due on Friday doesn't mean I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything. I would at least try and start it. Today's lecture is going to be looking at equilibrium in three dimensions, and the majority of the lecture is going to be devoted to one problem, which is, it, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's a little bit of a doozy, not because it would be super difficult to do yourself, but to teach it and whatnot takes a little while to explain everything. Um, one other thing I will mention is, uh, if you noticed on Teams, I did make a post to start collating questions uh, for review, for exam review, uh, on Wednesday. Okay, uh, I already had one question from a student, uh, if uh, I could provide some practice problems. The answer is yes. Uh, I'm going to post a couple to that, but if you have any specific things you'd like me to go over during the exam review, uh, make sure and, and collate those. I mean, you can ask questions during the exam review, obviously, but uh, we got a lot of people in here, so if there's any questions, uh, I want to make sure that they are, um, uh, uh, that, that I can address them. Sound good? All right, let's get into it. So uh, up until now, we've only handled the equilibrium assessment of structures in two dimensions. And so we've only had uh, three equations of equilibrium to deal with. Some of forces in the x direction, some of forces in the y direction, some of moments. Now, um, one of the things that um, we did recognize uh, is that um, it's probably not a bad idea. I mean, even with fixed supports, it wasn't all, it wasn't a, uh, necessary, but it wasn't a bad idea. Um, but what we found is that it's probably not a bad idea to do sum of moments first, because if you sum moments, let's say you have a simply supported beam that has a pin support on one end and a roller support on, on the other, you can sum moments about uh, the point which two of those unknowns intersect, and so it allows you to solve for the remaining unknown without having to break out three equations, three unknown solvers uh, in your calculators. So there's some strategy to doing moments first. And that is also true in three dimensions. In three dimensions, it is usually advantageous to uh, uh, sum up your force vectors and sum up your cross products of R cross Fs, but deal with those first. Deal with the moments first, the R cross F vectors first, because it allows you to handle everything else a little bit more systematically. Now these are the boundary conditions that we dealt with in two dimensions, and these are some of the boundary conditions that we deal with in three dimensions. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you we are not going to get super inventive uh, in this uh, course on the different types of boundary conditions. And I say that because what I'm mostly interested in is your ability to assess these types of problems as a whole. Once they're well defined, I want you to understand the process. We don't really, in this course, need to get into the super fine details of what's the difference between, let's say, this support and this support and whatnot, we're really going to keep it pretty simple. I'll go ahead and tell you that the two main types of supports that I want you to deal with are this right here. This is a ball and socket. It's basically just a pinned support in 3D, so it can resist forces in the X direction, Y direction, Z direction, but no moments. So it's kind of like a simple support in 3D. Force reactions, but no moment reactions. And then maybe this one right here. This is kind of like the, um, the column outside the, um, uh, that's uh, 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 between the, uh, the two engineering buildings, the column that's supporting that canopy. If I have an element just sort of embedded that can resist both forces and moments in 3D. If you can handle those and then like cables and whatnot, you're going to be fine. So I just show you this for posterity, but we don't need to get into the, uh, the hyper specifics of every individual um, uh, boundary condition because once you identify the free body, the rest is just plugging and chugging. So this is what we're going to do today. Okay, we have a five foot eight, uh, a five foot by eight foot sign of uniform density that weighs 270 pounds, and it's supported by a ball and socket joint here at A and two cables, uh, this cable EC and this cable BD. And so we're to determine the tension in each cable and the reaction at A. 
Uh, so a couple of things worth mentioning. Um, I, I might have, I don't want to say lied or fibbed or, or made a mistake, but one of the things I told you is that I would never give you a problem where the number of unknowns doesn't match the number of, of knowns. And I'm a little bit fibbing with this problem because when we look at the unknowns for this problem, there's going to be five unknowns. There's going to be three unknowns for the reaction at A, and then one unknown for each of these cables. So there's five unknowns, but there's six equations of equilibrium. Um, in certain scenarios, that might be considered an unstable problem, but we're going to see something that happens when we sum moments. We're going to find that one of the terms uh, about one of the axes are all zero. So that sixth unknown force really isn't necessary for this problem. And also, it just helps reduce the scope of the problem a little bit so that we can do the problem together. Um, the other point that's worth mentioning is this statement about the sign, uh, this 5 foot 8 sign of uniform density, and it weighs 270 pounds. So we're going to have a weight vector, a weight vector, and it's 270 pounds, so the weight vector is going to be 0i minus 270j plus 0k. It's 270 pounds acting in the y direction, and it's acting downward. But we also have to place that vector at a particular point. And I propose that where we would place that vector is right here in the middle of the rectangle, right? If you have a sign that has uniform density, I can idealize that weight as acting like right here, right in the middle of that rectangle. And I'm sort of um, easing you into the concept of a centroid with that because that's where we're placing that essentially is the centroid of that rectangle. Now, the centroid of a rectangle, the centroid of a circle, those are easy to define. The centroid of, I would say, a very irregular shape is maybe not so easy to define, and that's what we're talking about after the, uh, the second exam. So, all right, let's get into it. Okay, so one thing I'll, I'll mention before we get right into this is that there's going to be a lot of calculations with this example. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. And um, instead of at, like, I'm going to try and make sure that you all are paying attention, and I might query you a little bit, but I might give you a lot of the answers to some of these calculations just to make sure that we're, we're rocking and rolling with this. Okay, so I propose, so the first thing I want to do with this problem is I want to define all the forces. In pounds. Let me get this uh, this one picture out of the way. Uh, again, I, you know I'm, I, I have a tendency to cheat and whatnot. Okay, so I want to define all of the force vectors that exist on this problem uh, because I want to have a stock of just what the heck it is I'm dealing with, what it is that I need to solve, uh, etc. Okay, so let's take a look at this. All right, um, all right. What force vectors do we need to deal with in this problem? Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is this weight, okay? Now, I have a sign that weighs 270 pounds. Now, I know that that's going to act in this direction right here, so I'm going to idealize that vector as acting right here, right in the middle of this sign. So, we'll say two and a half feet down uh, on the y-axis and four feet out on the, um, so, yeah, four feet out on the x-axis, okay? Uh, we'll deal with position vectors here in a bit, but I want to define that force vector, and I want to go ahead and say that that is W, we'll call it weight, or W for weight, is 0i plus, and we'll say negative 270j plus 0k, okay? And I find that it's very, very valuable to write vectors like this for problems like this where we group the, the coefficients so we know whether or not it's positive or negative because we're going to be doing a lot of vector addition and I don't know, it helps me see what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> now, uh, this uh, reaction here at A, okay, this reaction here at A is a ball and socket uh, reaction. So basically think of it as a pin in three dimensions. So I propose that that reaction at A has three unknown components, okay? It has a reaction in the x direction AX, a reaction in the Y direction, AY, and a reaction like this, AZ, okay? And if I write that vector out, it's AXI plus AYJ plus AZK. 
This has three unknowns. These three unknowns are independent of one another. They don't depend on each other. So these are completely independent values. AX, AY, and AZ. Okay? And I'll go ahead and tell you, these are actually the last terms that we're going to solve for. Okay? All right. Okay. Now we've got two other forces that we need to deal with, and that is... Sorry, let me go back to my colors here so that you can kind of see. We have this force, and we have this force, right? So if I'm drawing the free body diagram of the sign, the sign being the rigid body, what are the forces that are acting on the sign? Well, we have its own weight pulling downward. We have the reaction here, and we have these two cables yanking on it at points B and E, okay? So... In order to define those vectors, I propose that the easiest way to define them, so if we're talking about, let's say, vector T, B, D, it's going to be the magnitude of that times its unit vector. And then T, uh, sorry, C, E, or, or E, C, is going to be T E C times lambda E C. And so these are the forces that we have to deal with on this problem. Okay? We have to deal with the weight, the reaction, and these two vectors uh, uh, representing the forces in the cables. Is, is everybody okay with that? Okay. Now, I am all about making sure that we know what we're doing and why we're doing it before we just start barreling through um, uh, the, the, the calculations. So let's see if we can also be a bit strategic about where we should sum moments. Okay, how many unknowns do we have in this problem? One, two, three, four, five. We have five unknowns, right? Whenever we sum moments, remember it's always strategic and advantageous to sum moments about a point that eliminates as many of those unknowns as possible. So help me out. If I were to sum moments about any point on the structure, remember the structure doesn't care. We can sum moments about anywhere. But if we're trying to make our lives easier, where would we sum moments to eliminate many of those unknowns? Point A. Exactly right. Okay. So when we define position vectors, we're going to need, okay, so let's talk a little bit about position vectors, okay? Let's do that. Okay, so let's do our position vectors. <clears throat> okay, so the position vectors are going to be measured in feet. We're going to need how many of them? Well, I propose we're going to need three of them. We're going to need a vector pointing to E, a vector pointing to B, and then a vector pointing right here. Okay? So, for example, here's a vector, here's a vector, and then remember we've got that weight applied like right here in the middle of that rectangle, so we need a vector right there. Does that make sense? Remember, a position vector starts from the point about which you're summing moments. So for summing moments about this point, all the position vectors have to come from here, and they have to point to the points in question. So, you know, what would we name them? We would name them, let's say, R to B from A, R to E from A, and R to W from A. Now I'm lazy, so I'm just going to call this RB, RE, and RW. Okay? Now, let's see if we can do RB first. How would you define the vector going from here to here? Okay? What is that? Well, I'm going from here to here, yes. I'm talking about this vector. That's it, right? It's just 8i, correct? There you go. So now you can write just 8i if you want. I'm going to be a little 
verbose. And I'm just doing that because when we write out, because we're going to be doing some cross products here, okay? And I, I just think it's, it's valuable to, to have all this out. What about RE? How's that change? 6i. 6i, there you go. Okay, and RW, how many, uh, what's that going to be? How, long, how much along the x-axis? And how much along the, the uh, y-axis? There you go. Right? Okay. Now, before we um, start plugging and chugging, how many cross products are we going to have to evaluate for this problem? Let me ask. How many cross products? How many forces contribute moment about point A? Three. It's exactly right, okay? Because let me grab my little laser pointer here, okay? So look up here. Okay, so this is the free body diagram for the sign. Okay, the reaction AX, AY, and AZ, they all pass through point A. They do not generate moment about point A, right? But the three forces that do are this, this, and this. Does that make sense? Okay, so before we start actually grunting out some, some calculations, maybe what I'll do is put required cross products. And so what we're going to need is a moment, okay, a moment generated by the weight of the sign, which is going to be R, W, cross with W, right? Does that make sense? I'm going to need to do the moment generated by cable BD, which is R, B, crossed with that tensile force. And then I'm going to need the moment from the other cable, which is R, E, crossed with that tensile force. Because what, what I'm getting at here by doing this part at the beginning is I don't want to just start chugging a bunch of, oh, here's some vectors we're multiplying, here's some vectors that we're adding. I want you to know what we're doing and why we're doing it, right? So this is a statics problem, right? Static states that to, to be in static equilibrium, the sum of forces must be zero and the sum of moments must be zero. So what we've got to do is we've got to evaluate the cross product of each of these vectors, add them up, and say that each of their components are zero. So we'll get some moments in the x direction, some moments in the y direction, some moments in the z direction. And then we'll add up all those forces up there and get some forces in the x direction, some forces in the y direction, some forces in the z direction. And then solve for our unknowns, and that's it. Okay? So does everybody kind of understand the strategy? Okay. Now, if you understand the strategy, now what we're going to do is actually start getting to some math here. Okay? Again, I think this is kind of valuable so you can kind of see the, um, the end picture. Now, again, I'm kind of cheating here because I want to have this diagram again. Okay. Oh, it doesn't like me. Ah, oh, well. I don't know why it doesn't like does that sometimes. Come on. Hold on. All right, give me one sec. I'm sorry. Let me close this and open it. It's not liking me. Hold on. I got to use my colors for this. There we go. Sometimes this software can be a little buggy. Okay. All right. 
So if we understand the, um, the process, okay, so what I want to do now is I need to evaluate those cross products. Okay, what's the problem? The problem is uh, those tensile forces, right? Those tensile force vectors are defined as like T times lambda, and I need those lambdas, right? So what I need are distance vectors, convert those to unit vectors, and then define them as force vectors. So let's do those first. So distance vectors. Okay, what I need is BD and EC. So if I go from B to D and I go from E to C, let's see what we get. I'll do the first one. Let's see if you can do the second one. So BD, okay, I propose along the x-axis we go negative 8. Along the y-axis, we go up, and we go up positive 4. And then for the z-axis, we go negative 8, right? Along, so if we're going from B to D, along the x-axis, we go back 8. We go up 4. We go back 8. Does that make sense? All right, let's see if we can do EC. Can somebody tell me what the X component is for EC? Say it again. Negative six. All right, what about the uh, Y component? Positive three. What about the Z component? Two. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Okay. So if you're okay with that, what I need to do is take these distance vectors and I need to convert them to unit vectors. And so the way that I do that is I take the vector and I divide it by its own magnitude. So I need the magnitude of BD, which is negative 8 squared plus... 4 squared plus negative 8 squared square root. And so if you chug this out, you're going to get 64, 64, and 16. Take the square root of all of that, and that's going to give you 12. Okay? 12 feet, I should say. So therefore, lambda BD is negative 8 over 12 I plus 4 over 12 J plus negative 8 over 12 K. And if I want, sorry, if I want, I can simplify that a little bit and say that lambda BD is just negative 2 thirds I plus one-third J, two-thirds K. You okay with that? Okay. And again, I'm doing this because I want to multiply this times the magnitude and then get redefine the force vector. Okay. For EC, so what do we got? We've got negative 6 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared and so 6 times 6 36 plus 9 45 plus 249 square root of 49 is 7 Is everybody okay with that? So maybe I'll use my highlighter and highlight these so that everybody can kind of isolate what I just did. So here's 
the unit vector here, here's that unit vector. Okay. Everybody good? All right. So now what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to go back to those force vectors a bit. All right. So now we're going to say force vectors fully defined. And so we had a, a, which was AXI plus AYJ plus AZK. We have W, which is 0I plus negative 270J plus 0K. And now what I'm going to do is say this, TBD. Now what I'm going to do for TBD is I'm going to say it's this. And then TEC, oh sorry, got to put the magnitude, that was the whole point. And so, now I've got something I can take cross products of. And remember, I've got, I'll sort of write these next to them as well. Remember, we have RW, which was 4I plus negative 2.5J plus 0K. We had RB, which was 8I plus 0j plus, I don't need the parentheses for that, 0j plus 0k. I can do better than that. I'm not in that much of a hurry. And then re is 6i. Okay, and I know it's a lot of extra writing, but I really want to make sure that we're clear on what's going on. This part right here really sort of fully defines the problem. These are all of the forces associated with this problem, and since we're summing moments at A, not only do we need all of the forces, but we need a position vector associated with each of the other forces because those are what's generating moment. Does that make sense? So now what I need to do is if I wanted to sum forces, I could do that right now. Just sum up all the uh, I components, sum up all the J components, sum up all the K components. But again, it's advantageous to do the moments first. So what I need is this cross with that, this cross with this, this cross with this. And again, this is what I was saying where if you can do this in your calculator, it's going to make your life a lot easier uh, in terms of uh, chugging this out. So now let's start doing some of our cross products. So let's start off with MW, so that's RW crossed with W, and so what am I going to do? I'm going to do I, J, K, I'm going to do 4, negative 2.5, 0, and I'm going to do 0, negative 270, 0, okay? May I ask you a question? Can I just give you the answer for these, or do we need to chug this out? I mean, I'm asking you, you know. You good if I just give you the answer, or do you think, do we need to go through it? Okay. So, you know, what, whichever method you want to use, if you want to use cofactor or take these two here and go that, 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 minus that, 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 whichever you want to do, um, you end up getting the following answer. 0i plus 0j plus, and this is the only one that gives you an answer, and it's minus 1080K. 
Now, what's interesting is that you probably didn't necessarily need a cross product for this one because if you look at the 3D problem, like take a look at this right here, how far is this point from A along the x-axis? Along the x-axis, it's four feet away. It's 270 pounds. What's 270 times four? It's 1080. So that's, uh, that's where that comes from. But we need this practice because the other ones we do need a cross product for. So the other thing I will mention is that this is in foot pounds because the weights are in, the forces are in pounds, the position vectors are in feet. Okay. So now we need uh, our remaining cross products. So we need M. BD. So MBD is, um, let's see, RB crossed with TBD. Now here's a little trick that you can use with these uh, force vectors and these cross products. Okay, if you look at TBD, you know how each term is going to have a, a TBD multiplied by it? There's going to be two-thirds times TBD, one-third times TBD, negative two-thirds times TBD. We can factor the TBD out of the whole thing. So what we can do is we can say, all right, whoop, we can say I, J, K for the R vector, eight, zero, and zero. And for the force vector, instead of saying like negative two-thirds T, you know, one-third T, two-thirds or negative two-thirds t, et cetera. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor that out. And I'm going to say negative two-thirds, one-third, negative two-thirds, and just say that the, t, the magnitude is adjusting the whole thing. You can factor that out. And so this is something I can plug into my Casio. So I can plug in the uh, cross product of this vector and this vector. And when you chug that out, you end up getting... Um, the following. You end up getting uh, 0i plus 16 thirds j plus 8 thirds k. And again, the whole thing is multiplied by TBD. So what I'll do is I'll say 0i plus 16 thirds TBD j plus 8 thirds tbd k. I'm distributing that out because I think we need to go, we need to do that now because when we sum moments, I don't want to forget that, okay? Should I give everybody a little bit of a chance to catch up or is everybody good? Okay, all right. So now what we need to do is we need to do our last one. We'll scroll down a little bit. Oh, I didn't mean to scroll down that much because I wanted that last vector up here. MEC equals RE times TEC equals. So all I'm doing is I'm crossing this vector up here with that vector right there. And so, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and give you that answer as well. And so you get 0i plus, come on, plus, and this ends up being negative 12 sevenths, and then plus 18 sevenths, and again, multiplied by your magnitude. So let's distribute that out. Okay. All right. 
Okay, is everybody sort of following along like with what I'm doing and why I'm doing it? Like I'm not just doing a bunch of numbers and crunching stuff and you don't get the big picture. Is everybody okay with that? So the idea is uh, I need to sum forces and sum moments. So this is me computing how much moment I get from the three forces that are not applied at A. So remember I said that it's advantageous to sum moments first. Here's what I mean by that, okay? Let's sum moments. So I'm going to rewrite our vectors because I want them all lined up. Okay, and so what do I get? I get 0 i. In fact, I got 0 i for all of them, right? They were all 0 on the i term. This is what I meant when I said we only had five unknowns. If we, once we uh, did all of our, our, our moment computations, we didn't have any moment along this direction, so we didn't need that extra reaction. Okay, uh, plus, 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 zero J, and this is uh, 16 over third TBD J, and this is negative 12 over 7 TEC K, or sorry, J, plus, 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 and then negative 1080 K, uh, 8 thirds TBD K, and 18 sevenths. Okay, the reason why I'm writing it this way is so that they're all kind of lined up is because I propose that the sum of these vectors, the sum of these moment vectors must be zero, okay? That's what static equilibrium tells me, that the sum of moments must be zero. And since these vectors represent all of the moment that is being generated about point A, okay? And what I can do is I can handle this as three separate equations. If I add up these coefficients, what do I get? What's this, what's this, what's this? Okay, what that means is that the sum of the moments about the x-axis is zero. That is already satisfied. What we need to do is figure out what values here and here, what these two values need to be to satisfy the other two equations. These coefficients representing the sum of moments about the y-axis, and these coefficients representing the sum of moments about the z-axis, okay? So when we do that, we get the sum of moments about the y-axis is zero. We get 16 thirds TBD minus 12 sevenths TEC is zero. And when we sum moments about the z-axis, we get, so what I'm going to do is, what will we get? We get negative 1080 plus 8 thirds TBD plus 18 sevenths TEC. Let's move the 1080 to the other side of the equation. Could I do this? Would that be a fair, did I, is that okay? Just move the constant over to the other side. So now what I'm left with is this. Two equations. Two unknowns. And so, oh man, that's messy. And so we're going to solve via the Casio. Remember how we do this? We go mode, then we hit option five, 
And then we do option one, because this is the equation solver, and this is a two by two. You can do this however you want on your, uh, on your independent calculator. And so what we're going to do is we're going to input, um, what do we see? What do we got? Um, 16 thirds, negative 12 sevenths, zero. Um, eight thirds, 18 sevenths, and then 1080, right? And so what that yields, remember how you plug that in, right? Because what that yields is it yields x equals and y equals and remember the order in which we wrote it. So X is going to be TBD and Y is going to be TEC. Now I'm curious to see if you're getting the same answer I'm getting. But what I got is X is 315 and Y is 405 over 4 or 101.25. Anybody else get that? Did it? Hold on. You got them backwards? You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. X is 101.25. Y is 315. You're right. That, that's absolutely right. Does that make sense? And I assume other people got that. Okay, so what that means is that we've got two of our answers. So this is all the calculator stuff. We now have two of our answers. We know that TBD is 101.25 pounds and TEC is 315 pounds. So that is the tensile force. in two of those cables, in those two cables. Now we're not done because we're missing something. What haven't we done? The reaction at A. We don't know what the reaction at A is. And how, are, conceptually, how are we going to do that? What, are, what, are, what have we not done yet? We didn't sum the forces in each direction. Now we can do that because if you scroll up here, these were our force definitions. Let me scroll up here. Right? These were our force definitions right here, and now we know what TBD and TEC are, right? So now what we can do is line those up, sum forces along each column, and get A, and we're done. So let's do that. So now let's look at summation of forces. So let's deal with these first. Let's deal with TBD. So TBD was T, TBD times lambda, which is 101.25 negative. All right, and that equals, what is that, negative um, 67.5i plus 33.75j plus negative 67.5k. Is everybody okay with that? So let's do the same thing for the next one. So take that magnitude times that unit vector, which we got and we got, um, let's see, negative 270 
135, and then 90. So that's just 3 15ths times this, 3 15ths times this, 3 15ths times this. Uh, and then don't forget, we got two other vectors, right? We've got W, which was and we have A. This is actually pretty easy, right? Oh, come on. You're not in that much of a hurry. You can make that a little neater. So now he, here are each of our four vectors, and now you see how I've kind of written them, and again, this is kind of why like, I'm really uh, paranoid about making sure that the parentheses are, are used so that I can know that's negative, that's negative, that's zero, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, you know, I can track that pretty easily. Now what I can do is just like before, I can take this column and say that's the sum of the forces in the x direction. This column is the sum of the forces in the y direction. And this column is the sum of the forces in the z direction. And if you look in each column, how many unknowns are in each column? Just one, right? So let's, let's see what happens. So if I sum forces in the x direction, what do I get? Negative 675 or 67.5 minus 270 plus 0 plus AX is zero. So all I got to do is take AX uh, or take everything else over to the other side and that plus that is simply, hold on, 337.5. Some forces in the Y direction, I get And so, bring everything over to the other side, 101.25. Negative 67.5 plus 90 plus 0 plus AZ equals 0. AZ is negative, in this case, 22.5. So, therefore... I know, I told you, this is a doozy of an example, 337.5i plus 101.25j plus negative 22.5k, and then don't forget, I'll go ahead and repeat these, we had two more answers, right, because we had, what did we have, we had TBD, we got that one. That one was 101.25, and then TEC was 315. Boom. Answers in pounds. Boom. I need a nap. <laughs> I, I know that this is a little bit of a, uh, like just, it's just a lot of grunt work, but what I'm hoping is that you understand the process, right? So what did we do? We defined all of our vectors. We defined not only, but I, I think what, what I'm hoping is, what I'm really hoping that you got is which vectors did we sum and which vectors did we cross? Since we summed moments at A, we did cross products for all the other vectors, right? Right? The weight and the two cables. Summed the moments, summed the forces, bam, there's our unknowns. We had one two by two we had to solve, but when we did the sum of forces, that was actually pretty easy. We didn't need to plug this into a solver or anything. We could just solve each equation directly. But that's your answer. What I did for the pre-recorded video is I have another one, a completely separate problem. Uh, so that you've got two problems that you could sort of go off of. 
and I'm giving you a homework on this that's due Monday. I'm not making it due Friday because these are pretty heavy problems. Sound good? You get a week away from me. I wonder if my wife would agree with you or something. That's all. Y'all have a wonderful day.